Buenos dias. Es el lunes. Es son las doce. Hello, everyone. It's Monday and it's 12 o'clock, so it's time for our first community Spanish lesson of the week. Uh, number one of three, broadcasting live Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 12 o'clock. Uh, we also have our kids' programming still going on, so every day at three o'clock, we have kids' French, and at 3.30, kids' Spanish. And then we also have added, as of last week, officially the uh, community French for adults on Thursday and Tuesday and Thursday mornings at 8.30. Um, so you can hopefully get a little French at the start of your day before maybe you have to go to work, uh, whether that's working from home or going out to work. Um, so we have those to tune into. Uh, we also have on our Instagram going live for French and Portuguese. So we have on that platform as well, in addition to our Facebook Live. Um, a reminder to please like, comment, and share on the video so we know what you're enjoying and we know uh, any recommendations of topics you'd like us to cover. Um, and last little thing, actually two or more quick reminders. Uh, one is about the Facebook Live page on our website. Um, there's where we're uploading all of the links to the video, so you have everything all nice and organized in one place. So if you're looking for a particular topic or a particular um, series of videos, they're all organized there with the links uh, there. And in addition, we have some extra free, free resources uh, to have some additional worksheets of things that we made to go along with the videos we're doing. So if you want to get a little bit more practice outside of the video, um, you have more resources to explore. And those are, you're welcome to, uh, you know, do them yourself or also share them with anyone who you think might benefit from some extra practice. So uh, please feel free to share those around. My last reminder is that um, we are coming up soon already on our July classes. And so the schedules are all posted on the website. So if you're looking for a class, Um, please feel free to check that out and see what might work well for you. And if you have any questions or need any help to find the right class, um, or if you want to sign up for tutoring as well, if you're looking for more of a private class instead of a group, uh, please feel free to reach out to me. Um, you can reach me either through the contact form on the website, or you can email me directly at erica, E-R-I-C-A, at rolalanguages.com. So those are my uh, all my little reminders before we get into today's lesson. So Uh, for today, we have a kind of a more basic and fun vocabulary lesson that we're going to be doing about the uh, animal vocabulary in Spanish. Um, so this is one where it's mostly going to be a lot of just repetition. And then we have uh, an exercise to do together to um, practice describing a picture, which I know is basic, but these are, you know, animals are everywhere. We need to be able to describe them. And whether you're talking about a pet that you have in your house or maybe something you see like a wild animal or maybe if you go to the zoo, um, this vocabulary can be useful in a lot of different places. And as just like in English and many languages, there oftentimes are expressions that use animals. Um, so it's another helpful part to building your, you know, your vocabulary, your capacity in Spanish that you didn't know some animals that might also help you to learn some expressions in Spanish. So without further ado, let's get to the vocabulary. So I'm going to share my screen so you can see, and we're going to learn these uh, words together. So. First, we have, this one is probably our most uh, common Spanish word for animals that almost everyone knows, is el perro. El perro. So please repeat these after me. El perro. And then for the female version, we have la perra. La perra. You can see on our list here, we have the words uh, like un and una, meaning a or an, and the ones I'm saying are el and la, like the. So it's pretty much, it's not a huge deal. Um, mostly you want to focus on the word itself, like perro and perra. So that is for dog. Uh, next one we have for cat is gato. Gato. And for the female version, gata. Gata. You can see uh, on this list that sometimes we have both male and female versions of a word, uh, of an animal, and sometimes we only have one version. I think that kind of tells you maybe what the, the perceived importance of gender for the animal could be. Like it, people are more likely to need to specify or, or need to know uh, for whatever reason, the gender of certain animals, but other ones we don't really focus on them. So you can see that they only have one form. So for example, our next one, which is el pájaro, pájaro for bird, we use that for all birds. We don't, in general, we don't say pájara for a female bird. It's just all the birds are pájaros. Okay, next one, we have raton, raton. You want to be careful here. Raton is mouse, but rata is a rat. So we want to make sure we don't get confused between the English and, and Spanish to think that raton is a rat, but raton is a mouse. Uh, and just like the one you use on your computer too, like in English, we call them both the real animal and the computer um, tool. We've called them both mice. 
Uh, same thing in Spanish, so that your, for your computer would also be a razón. Okay, next for the turtle is tortuga. Tortuga. Cow, we have vaca. Vaca. And as I've mentioned in previous videos, that the pronunciation of the letter V in Spanish, depending on who the speaker is, sometimes it sounds more like V, and sometimes it sounds more like B. So you can, someone can also say vaca. Okay, but they're both for cow. Next one for a duck, we have pato. Pato. Next for a whale, ballena. Ballena. And also for pronunciation on this one, we have noted in the several past videos about the double L in Spanish. So again, you can make like a, a yes sound, like I pronounced it, ballena. Sometimes it's more of a, a hard J sound, ballena. Okay, or sometimes even it's a j sound, so vagina, vagina. So this will depend on where the speaker is from in general. That will determine about how they pronounce that this sound. So there's a lot of, there's some variation. Okay, next one we have is for pig is cerdo, cerdo. For horse, caballo, caballo. Or again, caballo or caballo. Doing it depending on the pronunciation of the person speaking. Then for a mare, like a female horse, we have yegua. Yegua. And same thing, we could we could potentially say yegua. Again, if we're gonna do the some other pronunciation variation. Okay, next one for a, a hen, we have gallina. Gallina. Or gallina or gallina. Okay, next for, for a rooster is gallo. Gallo. Next one for bear. This one is where a possibility where we have male or female versions. So we can have oso. Oso. Or female bear. Osta. Osta. Next for fish, we have pis. Pis. And remember with the, the Z in Spanish that we don't pronounce it Z like English. So we can either pronounce it like S, which is the kind of majority of how people will pronounce it in Spanish. But if you're in Spain, then they will pronounce it like a TH sound like, so pes, okay? Or again, the rest of the Spanish speaking world, pes, with an S, and, uh, sorry, with a S sound. <laughs> it's still written with a Z, but we're with an S sound, pes, okay? Next for a uh, rabbit, yep, conejo, conejo, for a female rabbit, Coneja, coneja. Lion is león, león. Or lioness, leona, leona. Next for tiger, we have tigre, tigre. Or for female tiger, tigresa, tigresa. And the last one here we have for giraffe, jirafa, jirafa. Now, um, one more note before we repeat these all very quickly before we get to our exercise is to keep in mind that if you wanna say like the baby version of any of these animals, um, or even it could mean also mean just a small one, but in general we say use it to mean the baby, we add the ending ito or ita to the end of the word, and that will give you the baby version. Again, it, it means like the little one, and, and it could just be the, the animal is just a, a small size, but usually we often use it to describe the baby version. So for example, well, for one like pato, we have for a duck, pato, so a duckling would be patito, patito. So you can do this, this to almost all of these, um, all these animals pretty easily, just adding ito or ita ending, and that will give you like the baby version of that animal. Okay, so just keep that in mind for when you want to use it. So you know, let's repeat this one more time super fast and then we'll get to our, our exercise to practice together. So we have perro, perra, gato, gata, pájaro, ratón, tortuga, vaca, pato, ballena, cerdo, Caballo, yegua, gallina, gallo, oso, 
Osa. Pez. Conejo. Coneja. León. Leona. Tigre. Tigresa. Jirafa. Muy bien. All right, let's get ready to do the exercise together. Now, this one is, is one where I'm really going to appreciate any input you can give if you want to write in the comments about and to help participate in this exercise. Otherwise, I'm going to have to go through it for myself. Um, so let's see. We have, so we have a picture here. We're going to describe que tiene el granjero. What does the farmer have? So again, feel free to write in the comments. I'm going to go through and label the picture slowly, but to give you some time to hopefully leave some, some uh, different ones in the comments if you want to say what animals you see. So, Kevin, Kevin, what do you see? So I'll we'll start. We have, I'll start from the, the top on the right, we have here. Yes, what is this? Or what are these? There's two of them. Yes, one. Yes, one. Here we have Caballo. Caballo. This is a horse. ¿Qué más? What else do you see? Next to the caballos, we have ¿Qué es? What's that? ¿Qué es? Es un gato. Es un gato. Okay. Now, ¿qué es? What is this one? El animal rosa, the pink animal. ¿Qué es? ¿Qué es? Es un... Es un cerdo. 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 Ok, we make our way around the picture. So, ¿qué, qué es? We look here. Or, ¿qué son? Really, ¿qué son? Because there's more than one. ¿Qué son? We have we have gallinas, gallina, hens. Gallinas. So uh, up to now we have gato, un gato, tenemos un gato. Or I shouldn't say tenemos, so we don't have it, but the farmer, el granjero, tiene un gato, dos caballos. Un cerdo, dos gallinas. Okay, and we have a few more animals left. ¿Qué son? ¿Qué son? What are these ones? We have, well, we technically almost have two there because we have the adults and then the babies. We have pato, right? Pato. Or in this case, it's probably if it's the if it's the mama, then it's gonna be a pata. The mama pata. We have the pata, the duck, and then it, as we talked about it before, when we talked about the babies, we're gonna just add the ending ito. So here we have those two patitos, una pata y dos patitos. Okay, dos más. We have two more animals left to go. So here we have. I'm gonna make a really long arrow to go down. Qué es what is that? This is, again, the one that almost all Spanish winners know. This is the perro. Perro. Now, a question I've gotten that sometimes is, what's the difference between perro with two R's and perro with one R? Perro with one R means but, like, I believe you, but this is perro with one R. But then we have perro, the animal with two R's. So to be honest, there's not really a very audible difference between the two. Um, you can kind of choose how much or how little you want to roll the R's. So if you want to make it really clear, you could say perro and perro and kind of put a more emphasis on the R's to make sure it's clear about which one, uh, which word you're trying to say. But usually the context will tell you, so you don't have to worry too much about causing confusion with that one. So this is un perro. All right, we have one last animal to go. ¿Qué es? This one, this negro y blanco, it's black and white. This one, we have la, 
la vaca, la vaca. Okay, muy bien. La vaca. So here's our little granja, our, our little farm, which has un perro, un gato, dos caballos, un cerdo, dos gallinas, una pata, dos patitos, y una vaca. So there is, that's our lesson for today on animals. Really, the best practice with this one is to name what's around you. You know, what animals do you see? What pets do you have? This is really the, the best practice you can use to uh, learn the Spanish vocabulary for animals. And I'm going to also be posting, as I mentioned, I'm going to be posting another exercise up on our website. So if you want to get a little bit more practice to work with the animal vocabulary, um, you can go there. Um, also, definitely something that flashcards will work really well for. So if you're if you want to look for uh, some sets of flashcards, that also can be a great addition to learning the animal vocabulary in Spanish. Okay, so that wraps up our lesson for today. Muchas gracias. I will see you next on Wednesday and on miércoles in a couple of days for our next Community Spanish. In the meantime, please uh, don't miss the Kids French and Kids Spanish coming up this afternoon, uh, today and tomorrow, as well as the Community French is coming up uh, tomorrow morning at 8.30, Tuesday at 8.30. So, so lots of things to watch until we get our next Community Spanish. Gracias y adiós.